In this video, we're going to learn how to create CSS animations. So if we take a look at the code here, I've just created a simple paragraph element, and this is going to contain our rectangle. So let's flip over to the CSS style sheet, and you can see I've created a width here of 400 pixels, a height of 200 pixels, a solid border of yellow, and I've made that 20 pixels. Now, the reason I've exaggerated this is this is the part that we're going to animate against. And I also want to point out that you can animate against any valid CSS property that you want. So if you wanted to go ahead and change the background color, you could do that. But as I said in this tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and animate against the border right here. So that's why I've made it solid like this, 20 pixels. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is actually define the CSS animation code. And we do that using the keyframes rule set. Now this is called at rules. And what this means is it's just a series of CSS statements or code that you use to tell CSS how to execute the animated code. That's all this is. So once again, just think of it as raw CSS code that we're using to tell CSS how to animate the particular property that we want to animate. Now you might ask, well, why don't I just throw this code down in this class? And the reason is you may have hundreds of classes that want to use this same animated code. So it doesn't make sense to put it in a class. You want to keep it separate so you can reuse it over and over again. It's actually a nice thing to have so that you don't have all of this extra code that you don't need. So you can bind it to as many different classes as you want. And we're going to bind this to this class in a minute. So again, this at sign defines the at rule CSS statement set, which is the keyframes. And then you just put in the keyframes keyword, and then you define the name, which we're calling test. Then we get to the actual meat and bones. This is actually where we're going to animate our property. This is actually where we're going to create the animated code. Now, the big thing to notice here are these percentages. And what this represents is the entire duration of the animation. Think of an animation again as sort of effects that are happening over time. So let's say this was a minute long, our duration. At zero seconds, it would start out at dark green. Then when we move to 30 seconds, it would be red. And then at the one minute mark or 100%, we would be at gray. Now I wanna point out also, this doesn't just flip from dark green to red. This is after all an effect. So the animation will slowly transition from dark green to red and then from red to gray. And then in the finale, it will actually return to the original color. So keep in mind, this is an effect it will only last as long as you tell it to last. Once it's completed, it will return to the base color that you defined in your class. And we're gonna see that when we execute this. Okay, and then again, you just specify the property that you want to alter. And in this case, we're doing the border color. But again, you could put background color or any other different type of property that you wanted to here that you want to manipulate. Okay, so now, as I said before, we need to actually bind our class to our animated code set. And the way we do that is we use the animation name property. We put that in our class. So we specify that right here, and we're gonna call this, of course, test. Now our paragraph class is tied to this animated code. Now, we're not done yet though. As I said before, we need to actually specify a duration. So that's what we need to do next. And we do that in the class as well. We do that at the class level. And the reason is you may have different classes that you want to have different time durations. You may have another one where you want it to run for 10 minutes. I don't know why you'd want to run it for 10 minutes, but you might. Okay, so let's go ahead and type in animation and we should get the animation duration property. There it is. And there we go. Okay, so now we need to put in a value. And what we're gonna do is specify 15 seconds. So we put in 15 and then we put in an S. Okay, and there we see it kicking off. Take a look at that. So it transitioned, I don't know if you caught that, from green to red, and now it should go from red to gray. You can see it's a gradual transition. Like I said, it doesn't just flip over. And there you can see it return to yellow, like I said it would. It will actually return to your base color, whatever you specified in your class, because this is not part of the animation, of course, right? This is just what we originally had here. Now, you can specify whatever values you want. Let's say you wanted to throw a fourth color in here. Let's say we wanted to go... Let's say during this animation, we actually wanted to go to yellow. So we can cop, let's copy and paste this. We're gonna put 75% here. And we're, let's, put in, uh, let's put in yellow, like I said we would. So let me go ahead and refresh this to kick this off again. So it starts out at dark green. 
and then it's going to transition to red and then we should get that yellow now at the 70 percent mark there it goes and then finally it should transition to gray and then it will transition back to the base color so that is how you use css animations at a very basic level thanks again for watching